So, really quickly, I'd like to know, who has an iPod? Yes? So, have you listened to it on Shuffle? I like to call that surprise pod. But, um, so, you know, hypothetically, it's pretty cool, because over the course of an hour, you can traverse, you know, continents and centuries worth of music. So my musical history basically reads like an iPod shuffle. Um, I grew up studying classical music. I grew up studying piano, viola, voice. And I'm eternally grateful for this, because early on, it laid the foundation of music theory, which helped me to kind of delve from genre to genre as I grew up. So during my youth, two questions arose. The first was, even though I love all types of music, must I stick to just playing one type? And the second question that I found myself wondering was, you know, where, where is my creative voice in all of this? So I started out classically trained, and by 17, I was an award-winning coloratura soprano who'd sung with Frederica von Stad. After that, I left for college, and I began touring as a hip-hop keyboardist for MC Lars. Just a little change of pace. <laughs> And then that sowed the seed for needing to tour and play with other bands. And over the, th over the years, I ended up opening for Ty Siegel, Akron Family, Zion I, Ray LaMontagne, Mary Chapin Carpenter, Jackie Green, and the Punch Brothers, just to name a few. Thank you. <laughs> so now that I'm a little older and a little bit wiser, I can confidently answer that first question, and that is, no, you do not have to stick to just one genre. I definitely have not. Um, I've gone from classical to hip hop, from punk to folk. But, you know, in each of those genres, I realized, you know, my creative voice wasn't really within one of those genres. It was somewhere else, but I wasn't sure where. So, since I was born, I knew one thing. I knew that I wanted to play music. And so that in itself gave me some confidence because, you know, I, I've grown up since I was a little girl, I knew where my passion was. I knew what I wanted to pursue in life. The only thing I wasn't sure about was my creative voice. So this is where jamming comes in. Le jam. So jamming happened, as it turned out, jamming happened to be vital to my creative process. And growing up as a classical musician, I had no confidence concept for what jamming was. And I remember the first time I ever jammed vividly. It was my freshman year of college, and I went to the music building to play some piano pieces, and this scruffy guy came up to me, and he was carrying a bass, and he goes, hey, you want to jam? You know, and in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, jelly, marmalade. <laughs> I just had no concept for what it could be. And, uh, you know, and so I'm, sh I'm thinking, yeah, sure, why not? How hard could it be? So I remember sitting down and the two of us looking at each other for what appeared to be, you know, an eternity and finally goes, well, this is awkward. <laughs> and he turned out to be one of my dearest friends and bandmates. And uh, he spent the next year and a half teaching me how to let go of waiting for instruction and to use my own musical judgment. And so years after that disastrous first jam, I found myself in a garage one night with the members of Government Mule and the guitarist uh, Jackie Green. And we ended up jamming for quite some time. And uh, after that jam, the bassist of Government Mule, Jürgen Carlson, he came up to me and he said, you know, thank you very much, thank you, thank you very much. I want you to know something. I said, what? And he goes, never lose your vision. And I remember thinking, vision? What? What are you talking about? And I think that's the moment that it hit me, that I think that each piece of musical information I'd collected over the years had finally synthesized into some greater musical voice. So I'd absorbed the aspects I liked best about each genre and put them together in my compositions without even realizing it. So by the simple act of pursuing my passion without the constraints of one genre, I've had the opportunity to find the musical vocabulary for my creative voice. So I want you to remember something. Just because your taste is a little eclectic, it doesn't mean that you lack a creative voice. And you're not lost. In fact, your voice could be 
one of the most original once you figure out how to put together the pieces. So with that, I'd like to play you a song, if the fates will allow me. <laughs> Thank you. This song is called Iron Spine, and it's about having a backbone and believing in yourself. Thank you.